Ja, head külaliselt. Me võime küsida nii eesti kui inglise keeles. Küsimus, question, maybe it's of all of you, but who would like to start? So the question is, uh, talking about, uh, of course, you have different models, uh, different kind of uh, systems, how to predict the different scenarios. But question two is a little bit technological question. Uh, in those models, have we taken into consideration about the capacity of, uh, of production when it comes to IoT and uh, saving, um, saving energy, new technologies? Is that a thing to think about in the next five years? Or are we in, are we in the baby steps in this, in this field? Taking in consideration Estonian market and also, okay, Estonian uh, Hulgi market and uh, European market. At, um, is this a thing to think about in the next five years? Or this is a pseudo thing to think about? Who would like to start? Internet of Things, I said Internet. Uh, it was a Right now, there is no big thing about it, uh, but when there is a huge, huge, we don't even. Do we have calculations like how much does it consume if we have like, I don't know, million uh, kind of objects or things in the Internet? Maybe. I don't know. Do I in English or in Estonian? How do you feel? Okay, Jade, for clarity, I do it in English as well, but uh, um, for other uh, participants. Uh, first, of course, uh, as clean energy package requires that uh, customers have access to their uh, consumption data. I, I consider this is a really important one, and as you very well know, that we have in place in Estonia an efficient gas data hubs, central data hubs, and uh, and if this requirement coming from the clean energy package that we have also a tool, uh, the so-called SP tool, which basically exactly the tool what every European country needs, uh, makes their uh, consumers' data available for consumers and potentially exactly for uh, these new market uh, participants. Well, I don't know, aggregators uh, and others who are basically different kind of applications. Uh, uh, and uh, I think this is exactly the, of course, this is the, the up to the meter. Of course, we should go maybe the behind the meter, but, but, but anyway, I see that uh, that uh, demand and generation should be participated as so it's uh, eager as basis uh, on power market, uh, different uh, time horizons. And of course, we as a, a DSO here in Estonia, of course, so we have done uh, quite a lot that, uh, especially if you look currently in manual frequency restoration reserves, but uh, on manual frequency restoration reserve, uh, uh, demand can participate on the same basis as generation. Uh, and if we look the future in light of the desynchronization, currently we do not have a frequency containment reserve and uh, automatic frequency restoration reserve because it's provided by Russian, Russians and uh, those markets uh, not uh, 
uh, exists uh, uh, in, in the Baltics, but uh, we have to build up and uh, definitely we, we do it the way that uh, demand uh, and uh, participate there the same basis and, and, and also uh, that all these new uh, business models uh, can, can be uh, on market. And why I so, say so, uh, that, uh, and why I personally, and this is not the elevated position, uh, I'd like to, to stress it, that this is my personal view, that why I am against the capacity man. It's because capacity management exactly kills this new type of uh, innovations. If we uh, take just the public money and finance it, uh, and use it uh, to finance some kind of um, already existing uh, uh, capacities, there are no way for, for innovation, and, uh, and this is not the good. Uh, this is the really where we can uh, lose a lot of efficiency on, on power market. That, that, and that where I see that this is very much uh, direct link between uh, uh, this kind of uh, IoT-based uh, solution and the market design itself. Yeah, thank you. But would you like to add? Thanks. Yeah, so uh, I think our general approach to this is, and, and what we've seen works, is that it's best to avoid prejudging what's going to be the solution as much as you can. So you, what you know is, what you, what you have the best view on is what is your requirement. So try and identify your requirement and then, and then make that the opportunity to deliver that, te that technological requirement, that, sorry, that uh, particular requirement as open as possible um, and avoid prejudging what the solution is to, to deliver that requirement for you. And, and everywhere that I've looked at capacity mechanisms in the US as well, it's surprising to people what they thought they were gonna get, they don't get. They thought they, you know, maybe they really wanted a big new CCGT and they got a load of distributed generation or maybe they were certain they needed generation and they got some, some storage and, and a lot more demand response. I mean, it, 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 there are all sorts of solutions which, which might be appropriate and we, we, we will not get it right if we try and guess what the best way to do it is now. Um, certainly not on the, on the planning horizon that you need to take when looking in this sector. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's in a good situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, how do we, oh, super, super. So let's do that, let's do that. Yeah, good as Nimi, or hell. My name is Tavo, and uh, a representative of Fusebox, and we are the team and response aggregator in Baltics. And Matt, the question to you, I saw in the, in the file also, in the slide also, that uh, demand response uh, can and uh, should, should be supported. And what can the system do to support demand response coming into the market? So, I mean, in my view, it means making sure that aggregators are allowed to establish and sign contracts with consumers um, without it, them needing some kind of consent of their, their supplier. So aggregators need to be able to establish independently and, and, and build contractual relationships with consumers. Sorry, sorry. sorry. No, 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 no. Um, but yeah, and, and I think the main thing is making sure that the access to the market is there and that then the rules in the, the heart of the market is always the imbalance settlement process and, and the market leading up to that just has to be sending signals that flexibility is valuable and allowing a route to market for people who can provide flexibility, including, but not only, demand response and aggregated demand response. But Matt, do you have uh, an opinion about the compensation size to the uh, balancing of the response of the parties? Well, I mean, it, in terms of compensation size, my, I, I'm not, do you mean, it, it, I think they should, have full balancing responsibility and pay for the full cost of balancing, and that if you're cutting off consumers, then the balancing price that people are paying who contributed to the imbalance should be extremely high, reflecting the, the value of load to those consumers. Yeah. Would like to, yeah, would like to uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'd just like to add, I don't know how many you know, but uh, we are just running together with uh, Latvian and, and Finnish colleagues and, and uh, not only from uh, transmission system operators but also from uh, distribution system operators such as first cross-border 
project uh, to establish the flexibility market, cross-border flexibility market there from 2021, and uh, and uh, oh, this is exactly for this purpose to to really encourage uh, uh, encourage the demand uh, to to get the market. And uh, if someone have a good ideas regarding that, Dagmar uh, is our project manager there as well. That, that, that please turn to Dagmar and uh, she definitely explains more. Thank you. Ja, olge heads. Ja loo võitub täiesti avad Eesti keeles küsida kõigi kuulavad kõik ja aitavad ole hea. Andres, kes oled kus tuled? <laughs> Aitäh, minu nime on Andres Troppanen Eesti energiast. Ma nüüd ei tea, kui hästi need õligid selle terminoloogiga kuulitud on ja sellepärast on väga liikne tegelikult kasutada inglise keelt, et see küsimus või sõnum tõlkes kaduma ei läheks. Mis on alati probleem? Ma tahaks küsida, ah, yeah. uh, basically I would like to ask uh, uh, two questions about uh, as, far as, uh, as far as the future uh, uh, security of the supply uh, issue, I mean issues basically are dealt mostly on the union level, also the national uh, assessment will continue but still you know, the basis according to the new uh, uh, Clean energy package shall be based on union, uh, on, on, on assessments uh, done on union basis. So I would like to ask <coughs> about uh, the, uh, about this union uh, uh, level assessment and uh, complementary uh, 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 assessment on national basis. You know, uh, uh, during the last couple of years, uh, Hillary has, con has conducted uh, those adequacy assessments uh, on the basis of Baltic states and Finland. And, uh, but the problem was, uh, at least uh, uh, for some people, including myself, uh, was that this region, in terms of uh, 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 generation, is in deficit. And, and uh, you know, I, we, 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 I, I fully agree with German Affiliary that it really doesn't matter whether the power plant is in Latvia, Estonia, or Finland. This is fine. This, this has no difference. But, but if the region is in deficit and we are not able to point on specific sources for imports, then we have a problem. And uh, so last year, uh, when we had this event, I was asking, I mean, how it is, I mean, could we, could, could in, uh, in cooperation with uh, regional TSOs, uh, including Baltic States, uh, Finland, Sweden, Poland, could conduct a joint adequacy assessment which would provide better understanding what is the actual status of uh, security of supply. And uh, Ellering uh, actually said that, uh, 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 yes, they were uh, looking into this possibility, but uh, unfortunately, Swedish uh, uh, side was not willing to cooperate. So uh, uh, if this system is going to continue in the future after the new uh, uh, energy market regulation will uh, take uh, effect. I'm asking how do you motivate you know, those uh, 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 national, I mean, uh, how, how, how to motivate those regional partners to cooperate if certain member states want to, wants to conduct a national assessment on the basis of the region. So I'm asking how you will motivate, for example, Sweden to cooperate in this manner. Uh, but this is the first question. I have second, sorry, uh, I have, because I'm not sure whether I will be able to ask the second, I will instantly ask the second as well. So, and the second question, you know, uh, I don't know whether uh, uh, due to this first uh, 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 question background, uh, but, but uh, this year's uh, 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 adequacy assessment done by Estonian DSO is largely based on the MAF uh, 2018. And in this uh, month 2018, Hillary has pointed out that <coughs> this assessment does not take uh, uh, into account uh, events which uh, probability is little, uh, uh, maybe not important. And if we are considering you know, what MOF 2018 has done, I mean, it does not take into account the economic viability of power plant units. I mean, taking into account the tectonic change which has taken place during the last one and a half years, and I'm referring on CO2 price 
then uh, of course I don't know how much uh, your accelerated low carbon sensitivity analysis takes into account the CO2 price element. Uh, but but uh, uh, I mean taking into account uh, this tectonic change which has taken place, I mean how many do you consider this MAF 2018 or MAF 2025 at all if it will not be able to cover economic viability? You uh, uh, asked that you said that it, it is therefore crucially important that uh, generators uh, provide reliable generation plans for uh, from uh, uh, for about uh, five years. I mean, in terms of market, no generator can provide such plan. Generator can only tell you what are the, uh, the regulatory uh, uh, restrictions, uh, if or whether the plant will uh, 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 will run out because of technical reasons. So. I'm asking uh, you, my second question would be... Uh, <laughs> Can we wrap it up, Andres? Yeah, yeah, yeah. my second question is whether Estonia has, has a plan yeah. to improve this methodology, what you are uh, uh, using currently for those assessments, especially in terms of economic viability. Thank you. If I can, I take the first question, really. That, uh, Thank you. I just got uh, things have been changed really and um, uh, yes it was so and even our ministers turned to the Nordic colleagues and really there was a, a no no answer from the Norwegian and the Swedish colleagues uh, beforehand but just a couple of weeks ago we had a Nordic Baltic DSO leaders meeting and I raised this issue once again and at this time there was a such willingness to, to cooperate and uh, take a such more close uh, region specific look uh, this year that I really hope that uh, that we, we can do this regional analysis uh, for the next year already, not only together with the Baltic and Finnish, but also together with the Norwegian and and Danish and, and Swedish Swedish colleague that I, I hope that this such situations is there. Thank you. Okay. And yeah, we would like to comment on the second question. So basically, I have the same question. Is the methodology, is it good for predicting the scenarios? Is it reliable? Is it good enough? Sure. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Just to uh, complete what uh, Davis said on the first one. Um, there, there, there are regional fora uh, for coordination and doing this kind of studies like the Pentalateral Forum in uh, uh, Western Europe. Uh, for something like that to work, there is need to be support. I mean, the beauty of this forum is that uh, there is regulators, there is member states, there are TSO together working on these issues. And actually, a lot of what you saw in the uh, adequacy forecast uh, developments is also due to this kind of cooperation. Um, the beauty of the of the clean energy packets and the significant added value of NSOE to this is that you do have common methodologies and common databases throughout Europe. I think you shouldn't neglect that when you talk about regional cooperation. Yes, you need to sit around the table, but you have a starting point which is quite important and it's there. Uh, for your question with respect to the viability of uh, generation, uh, we don't do it for the five-year horizon, so the scenario is five years ahead, because as I said, this is top-down information, so we rely on our TSOs to give us their estimate of what is going to be reliable into the system for the next five years. Uh, the TSOs get this information from generators, so yes, it's important that generators give them this information, but uh, the TSOs, when they transmit their aggregated uh, information to NSOE, they may apply this kind of uh, uh, post-processing, let's say, with respect to economic viability, viability or not. Is it the perfect approach? No, definitely. Is it part of our mission to, to deal with it? Yes, it is. It's going to be done, if not in the 2020 month, in the 2021 for sure. Is it something we've never done before? Uh, no, it's something we've been doing already, but we're doing it for the 10-year horizon. So in the 10-year network development plan, the scenarios that go from plus 10, plus 15, plus 20 years ahead, 
we do run the uh, economic viability check to make sure that our scenarios are consistent and they are ready to be studied. Um, is it something that we can readily reproduce for the math part of the scenarios? This is part of the methodology we need to elaborate. So we're on it. The situation is not perfect, it's not as bad as you might have implied. We do have these elements, but we'll keep improving it. Maybe Matt, would you like to add to that? Have you any kind of kind of cases or 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 situations that were also kind of not so close neighbors, but uh, yeah, in the area, some of the countries are not that eager to look uh, the bigger picture. Uh, do you have some kind of suggestion or solution according to that to that first question on, on behalf of Anas? Thanks. Well, so. Some member states do decide to cooperate, and you've got Ireland, as I mentioned, as one example, where there's a, an electricity system operated across two member states um, quite successfully. So, uh, of course, it, I mean, from my point of view, working where I work, I'd love to see much more regional cooperation. I think most of my colleagues would, and you see a bit of a push for that in the, in the Commission proposals in the Clean Energy Package, more focus on regional aspects to system management and cooperation between system operators. Always, when we're looking at the internal market, less focus on national boundaries and, and more focus on what makes sense if you think of Europe as a whole. But we, but we of course, we're in, in tension all the time, a little bit with with some quite conservative views about, especially something like security of electricity supply, but all sorts of other things as well, where where member states basically fight for their independence and their. And they have rights under the treaty, so there's, there's always a, a quite delicate balance and a bit of a tension between different objectives and different ways of seeing um, seeing the, the, the world and the continent. But yeah, from my point of view, <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, there, can, there are good examples of people cooperating. Regional approaches, I mean, it, we, have, we have to cooperate, it just doesn't make sense. You've seen from the analysis, uh, from the two, previous, two presentations before me, if you don't think, if you don't look at imports, uh, it's meaningless. Uh, do we have more questions on the efficiency? I was thinking of uh, is there a threat? Yes. In the meantime, if there are no questions, I, I have a, one question, of my own, to Matt. I know that a lot of uh, people also in this room and our market participants ask about the Lithuanian potential capacity management. How much you know about that and, and uh, what they think about that and how they sh should or should approach or, or how you see this issue? How much you know about it? Well, so <clears throat> what I can talk about is, is cases where we've, we've published something or adopted something. I'm afraid everything will where we have a discussion with member states about potential future measures, it's up to the member states whether they want to talk about that. But from our point of view, even the existence of those discussions is confidential, so there's nothing I can say about uh, measures that we might be discussing with, with people. I mean... But well, maybe this is one aspect that we understood, fully understood what you said, but, uh, but uh, at least as we understood that uh, uh, Digicop already are looking all cases regarding capacity mechanisms, uh, uh, in light of the clean energy package, that, that whatever every member state already like to do for strategic reserve or for capacity market, that, that, that they have to follow already somehow the requirements coming from the clean energy package. Is this right or, or not? Yeah, that's right. And that's actually, it's, it's rather separate from DG competition. So okay. state aid rules apply, people should come to us if they want to award state aid to people. It's illegal for them to grant state aid without coming to us, and that aid therefore is subject to recovery unless it was approved. But yeah, so the, the clean energy package includes these new sectoral rules that I presented on the last slide, and those apply regardless. Those are like the other rules that apply in the sector. So you have to have, uh, you have to apply all these things in the electricity regulation. That's legislation directly applicable on member states, and, uh, and those those rules have to be respected uh, completely separately from the, the competition rules and the, and the state aid aspect. Just one more thing on on Lithuania. We did adopt a decision recently opening an investigation on the on the past measure. There. So that, that is public, uh, and, and, and that's, that's the opening of an investigation, which means comments are invited 